Uh, we thank Hashem for having the chance to learn. We hope in this course of learning that uh, we were having the Tzuchan in Eretz Yisrael, we will eradicate Hamas, the Aliva Amalek, we'll bring back the hostages, or everybody needs a full shleim in all uh, Yisrael, and everyone, anybody else will get their full shleimers, and there'll be peace on earth, goodwill to mankind, and all that stuff. And if you hopefully saw that uh, 300,000 uh, rally, people rally, uh, you didn't, uh, you saw the difference of how we hold a rally in Washington, D.C., uh, and how really beautiful it was that was yesterday. Okay, so we're uh, starting. Rennie, Rennie? Yes. Just so you know, there are seven people online. Oh, well, it's not showing that. Thanks for making me nervous now. Okay, no more comments from Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, how do I mute them? I don't think All right, I please mute yourselves. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're starting uh, eight lines from the bottom on Yud Aleph. I believe that's where it ended off with Ula. Now, oh, we're dealing in the Gemara, so we're dealing with Amorahim. Ula is a third generation Amora. Second generation will be Rav Nachman because we'll be discussing a lot Rav Nachman and Ula. So Amor Ula, Amor of Elazar. So Rav, uh, Ula, uh, Ula said in the name of Rav Elazar, okay, and uh, I'm not sure which Elazar that is, but wh whichever one it is, Hilchasa uh, Gobin Min Havadim, the law is that we collect payment for debt from slaves that belong to a debtor. All right, so he says if a creditor is entitled to collect the slaves of a debtor as a payment for the debt, uh, that we can do that. That's his statement, all right? which basically means, uh, for, uh, at least initially, that Ula considers slaves as metaltalin, and he can uh, collect it. But we'll see how complicated this gets. Amalei Rav Nachman Rav Ula. So Rav Nachman says to Ula, uh, again, Rav Nachman is a generation or a teacher of Rav, of Ula. He says, Amal Rav Elazar Afilo Miasme. Did Rav Elazar say that slaves can even be collected from orphans, yasme means yasomim, as payment for debt owned by a deceased debtor? And then he's questioning, is that what you meant? He says, Ula replied, no, that, that can't be what it is. Rav Elazar only said that slaves may be collected as payment from the debtor himself, which means Ruvain died. Before Ruvain died, if he owed Shimon money, Shimon could come and say, look, if you don't have the cash, I'll take your slave. But once Ruvain died, he can't come to the Asomim and ask them for slaves. Why? In, in, in lieu of payment. The reason is because we'll get into criteria here that when you come to the Asomim for payment, you can only ask for payment from Karka, real estate. You can't ask for Metaltalin which is uh, uh, articles, all right? Or whatever the term we we use for that in English. Personalities. All right, what? Personalities. Personalities. I have a problem saying personalities because I think I'm saying personalities. Then I think I'm talking about my stuff and then I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to say articles most of the time. Ula's answer is questioned. Mine, he doesn't mean to say that slaves can be collected from the debtor himself. Afilu, Miglima da al Kaspe, when the credit is entitled to collect, even the cloak off the Dodish, Dodish, excuse me, off the debtor's shoulders. In other words, wait a minute. Why would he even have to say that? If you're if the creditor owes you, if Ruvain owes Shimon money and Ruvain can't pay up, Ruben, Shimon can come to Ruvain and say, I'm I want that extra suit that you have that you're wearing. Just, just give it to me. So if he can give this suit, he certainly can give them a slave. So we don't need Ula to come and teach this obvious law. The Gemara is now going to explain. We're going to end up bringing three Bryces. Uh, and we'll have uh, several permutations. It's quite interesting. What are we dealing with here? Where the dead are made the slave in apotheke. We've had this term before. Apotheke is basically an acronym. You will stand here. It refers to the property specifically designated by a debtor. 
for collection in case the debtor is unable to pay. So if the debtor made the slave an apothecate, meaning that in the event I don't have the cash, yes, the people I owe money, they can collect the slave. That should be fine. Ula teaches that Ravella's ruled that the creditor may collect the slave from the purchaser. Kid Rabba, in accordance with that which Rabba taught, the Amar Rabba. So, what did Rabba teach? But Rabba said, also Abdo Apotekate or Macharo. If the debtor designated his slave as an Apotekate and then he sold his slave, Bachov Gobe Menu, his creditor can collect from the slave. All right, in which he can seize the slave from the buyer. All right, it's like if you bought the stole, if a Shimon bought a stolen car, and the, let's go back, Ruvain bought a stolen car. Well, and then Shimon, who owns the car, comes to Ruvain and says, Hey, I want my car back. Ruvain can't say, Well, I paid for the car. He bought stolen uh, property, he never had the right to protect this car with a title of this and that. It's kind of the same thing going on here. So he sold the slave, all right? He wanted to make him a particular, but you know what? That doesn't protect him. There's no uh, uh, homestead on this slave, all right? Show a particular, however, if he designated his aunt as a particular and then sold it, what about if the case was in that? Uh, his creditor cannot collect the debt from the animal. He says, well, he, he can't collect, it sounds almost the same. He can't, he ca cannot collect the debt from the animal. He can't collect the timer. Well, let's see, my timer, mm. what? what? Yeah, it says like in, regarding the slave, it becomes like public knowledge. And regarding the animal, it doesn't become public. Okay, so Hilo said when they sold the slave, it became public knowledge. It was printed in, in the newspaper, all right? But when they sell an animal, it's usually... Uh, I'll say black market dealing, but it's not public knowledge, right? My time, it's un, uh, under the counter or over the counter, wherever it's called. My timer, what's the reason for this distinction? Her East Lake color, this distinction of the slaves not public, oh, that's the next line, becomes public knowledge. The lace Lake color, but the designation of the uh, public does not become public knowledge. You cannot read ahead and then give me that as the answer. That doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> with the top of page you'd top of page you'd base on the dollar. After Rav Nachman left the study hall, all right. So after Rav Nachman, who who uh, who after Rav Nachman, who said uh, who equate, excuse me, who would, let me go back. I said earlier the wrong thing. Ula said in the name of Rav Elazar that slaves weren't equivalent to metaltoli. And that's why you could collect a slave, all right? Because you can only collect karka, real estate, from a, uh, a, a yasam, all right? But now Rav Nachman disagreed with Ula, and Rav Nachman said that uh, slaves and metaltoli are the same, slaves and personalities or articles is the same. And therefore, since you cannot connect, collect from your Soman personalities, you could not collect the slave. So that's the basic argument going on between Rav Huna and Rav Nachman. Okay, so look at, get a load of this. So after Rav Nachman said what he said, and, and he leaves this study hall, Amalahu Ula, Ula said to the students, Hachayamah Rabbi Eliezer, this is what Rabbi Eliezer Said, okay. Uh, he's Rav El Azar said, Afilo Miyasmi, a creditor may collect slaves in payment of a debt, even from the orphans of a deceased debt debtor. So now Ula is saying the opposite of Rav Nachman. Okay. So Amar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman then heard what Ula had mentioned after he left, and he said, Ishtamin Ula. You know, Ula did the first one on me. He evaded me. He was scared that I'd start uh, citing the uh, teachings, which you see all these prices in his presence, and that I hold that a slave is equal to metaltaling, which I said before, and therefore cannot be collected from a yasum, uh, and therefore cannot be collected from yasum. So the Gemara cites 
actual rulings that were issued concerning this very question and Rav Nachman's reaction to these rulings. Haba Ubda bin Naharda. So Naharda is one of the yeshivas. It was on the uh, Euphrates River. All right. There was an incident in Naharda, and the judges there in Naharda collected slaves as payment of the debt from the orphans of the debtor. So you see that over there in Naharda, that the slaves were not, this is Lechara initially, it appears they weren't considered like Mitatalin, because you could do that. And there was another incident, Hava Uvda Bepumadisa, in the other yeshiva, there was similar. There was a similar incident, Vag Bay Rav Chana Bizna, and Rav Chana Bizna collected slaves as a payment of a debt from orphans. All right, so we have two uh, two sided places, two totally different yeshivas, two totally different locations where slaves were collected uh, in lieu of payment from orphans, which would show uh, apparently that slaves are not considered like metaltalim. Amalahu Rav Nachman. When Rav Nachman heard this, he said to these guys who did this, Zilo Ahuda, go return those slaves. If you don't return those slaves, be low. I'll collect your giant homes, your mansions, and which I'll possess them or repossess them or whatever it is. I'll sell them and I'm going to use that money to repay the orphans with them. So, boy, Rav Nachman really disagrees here with what they did. So now the Gemara is going to discuss Rav Nachman's view. All right? Again, Rav Nachman, it appears is the one who says, uh, why do you have to return the slaves? Because he feels the slaves are like metaltaling personalities or uh, articles and not like real estate, karka, and that's why they have to be returned to your soul. The Gemara discusses Rav Nachman. Amalei Rabba le Rav Nachman. So Rav uh, said to Rav Nachman, now, uh, uh, I'm having a little problem here. Rav Nachman is at least uh, almost two generations be, be above Rubber. So Rubber's like, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Moshe's kid here. Uh, Shalom. Shalom. He's like Shalom. You have this young guy who's, who's like very smart and he's asking uh, Rubber a question. Rubber said to Rav Nachman, Ha Ula, there's Ula. He's going even back in the other generation. Ha Rabbi Elazar, and there's Rabbi Elazar. Then there's the judges in the hard day. No, these are all the people who did disagree, apparently, with Rav Nachman. So he's naming four people. They all hold that slaves are regarded as land. So who are you? All right? Mark and Who does the master hold like? He's saying, you're disagreeing with them. You must be holding like someone who shows us that no, slaves are considered like real estate. So what do you base your opinion on? So Malay Rav Nachman replied to Rav. Rav Nachman said to Rav, on the Masmi say Yada, Yadana. I know of a Brisa. This is going to be Brisa one out of, I believe, three Brises that support my view. The Tani Avime. So he says, Avime said, Tani Avime, he turned the Brisa, Prisbo Chal Al Karka. So a Prisbo, remember, when it comes to the Shemitah year, all right, uh, the rabbis were worried that, you know what, people are not going to lend uh, other people who need money prior to Shemitah, because you know when the Shemitah year comes, it abolishes all debts, no one's going to pay them back. So what are people going to do who need, who need to borrow money? All right, so they made what was instituted called the Prezbul. And the Prezbul, we've discussed it many times before, and maybe you've done it before, usually do it at the same time as Hattaris and the Durham, uh, in, in the Shemitah year, uh, is basically you transfer all debts to the basin. And that uh, negation of not having to pay back only applies to an individual, but it doesn't apply to a basin. Okay. Uh, okay. The Enoch, uh, that's what it says here, Chal Karka, the Lo Chal Avada. All right. So Prezbo is only for real estate. Metatoli nicknim in my karka. Now we're going to give a, 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 a few scenarios. What if you buy more than one object at the same time, or you're attempting to buy? Do 
you have to do a Kenyan on both, in which an, a sign of acquisition, or can you do a Kenyan or, uh, on one of them and it automatically acquire the other? All right, metatl and nickname in karka. It says, can movables, uh, movables can be acquired with the land. So you, if you buy a lot of land and there's a house on the well, the house is kind of stuck to land, but there's all these uh, sheds and other stuff that's stuck to the land or sitting on the land. It all comes with the land. It's like if you buy a house, uh, unless there's uh, an agreement that everything's moved out of the house, the moment you buy it and you move in, anything that's in there is yours. And if there's a safe in the house and there's money in that safe, that money's yours. I'll never forget, we bought a house and there was this like antique safe in the house, all right? And uh, we had uh, from all these, you know, dreams that, oh, who knows what's in there, you know, uh, money, gold, silver, this, that. So we pay the safe crack, a lot of money break open the safe. And there was Gornish mid Gornish in there. You know what Gornish mid Gornish is? GMG. Just here, somebody who understands Yiddish. All right. The only thing that I got was a bill from the safe crap. What if you buy a house? And what if you buy a house, Dr. Stein, and it, came, and it comes with Mrs. Doubtfire? Ah, that's that's fine. My house didn't go up for sale yet. But uh, when it was, when it comes, if you want it with Mrs. Doubtfire, we're working in, in the deal. She's still there. <laughs> then a nickname in my body. But they can't be acquired together with slaves. All right? So we're saying a statement here. Uh, no, regarding metatalim. What if you bought the avodim, the slaves? Can you get the metatalim, the personalities along with them? And the answer is no. So he obviously is saying, therefore you see from this brysa, that metat avodim are, are not, con uh, excuse me, avodim are not considered karka, are not considered real estate. All right, am I saying this right? Uh, wait, Rav Nachman. Uh, I want to not get confused. Slaves are not metat. Right, he, he felt Rav Nachman said slaves are considered metatalim. All right? Because if they were considered uh, slave, uh, real estate, then they could get it. I keep getting mixed up between the two. Yes, all right, we're good at the moment. So both of these rulings show that slaves are regarded as movable uh, items, personalities, all right? And for this reason, Rav Nachman holds that slaves may not be collected from orphans because you can only collect real estate from orphans. So now we're going to attempt to relate this dispute between Rav Nachman and Ula to an earlier dispute. Dispute. Lema ketanoi. Shall we say the dispute between uh, Rav Nachman and Ula is the same as the dispute between the Tanoi? For one Brisa, for one Brisa taught, all right, again, uh, I don't know if there's another Brisa yet or not, but we'll say, it says in the Bible, Machalo Avadim the Kakas. He sold him slaves, the man sold by his slaves and land. Hechazik Bavadim Lokana Kakas. If he made the Kenyan on the Avadim, he picked up the slave oh, I'm so happy to have you, you know, uh, uh, you know, this guy with his one earring, you know, bald head, whatever, and Mr. Clean in his hand. He, he said, so he did the proprietary act on the slaves. He doesn't acquire the land because karkos lo kana, the karkos lo And if he performed the proprietary act on the land, he has not acquired the slaves. Karkos metatalin, but if he purchased the land and movables, he has the karkos kana the metatalin. So we have a little problem here, all right? Because here we're saying you pick up the slave, you, you don't get the land with it which appears that slaves are not considered real estate. Otherwise you get, you, you make a Kenyan on the, uh, on the land, you, uh, you do get the metatal and the personal teas in it, even miss it that far if you want. People who don't know, I have a Mrs. Doubtfire wax statue in my house and that's what the time it was. If he performed the performed the propriety act upon the land, 
he therefore acquires the movables from metatal and low karka, low karka. But if he performs it on the metatalin, he's not acquired he acquires a land because you can't get land by by acquiring metatalin. A vadimu metatalin, if he was purchasing slaves and movables, hechazik the avadim lo kana metatalin. If he grabbed the slave, he doesn't get the personal teas, which means obviously it appears that the slave is not considered real estate and he performed the propriety act on the slave. He's not acquired the movables. The metatalin lo kana vadim. And if he performs it on the movables, he's not acquired the slaves. So it seems that according to this price, the slaves are considered like metatalin. And if the slaves are considered like metatalin, that would be a support for Rav Nachman, who said slaves and metatalin are the same, whereas Uled says slaves are not metatalin. All right, there's so many variations. You got to keep on repeating that not to get confused. For Tanya, but we learned in another Brisa, did I repeat something or am I going forward? Sometimes this uh, Shas pair jumps in me. For Tanya, in another Brisa, is taught. There it says, if you perform the Kenyan on the slaves, he does acquire the movables. So it would appear that there it's saying that slaves are like uh, Karka, all right, uh, which would support Ula. My love, but how come reflicate? If this is in, is it not in this very point that they argue, the Marsav Avadim Kimakarka Dami? Because uh, that, in other words, isn't this the argument that one holds that slaves are regarded as land, and the other holds that uh, slaves are treated as movables, which is Rav Nachman. So what is the answer? The Gemara argues that this is not necessarily the point of contention between the Tanan. Amar of Ika the Rav Ami. So uh, hold on a moment. So Rav Ika said in the name of Rav Ami, the Kulayama Vadim Kimikarka Dami. Everyone ag agrees that slaves, uh, wait, or is this a question? I mean, so is it possible that all the Tanam agree that slaves are treated as land? By the Tanya Kana Shapir, according to your understanding, the Bryce of the teachers, the one who buys slaves and movables are perf and performs a priority act on the slaves, has acquired the movables. That's the second Bryce is clearly understood. All right. In other words, if he acquires the movables, then the slave is like land. By the Tanya Lokana and the Bryce of the teachers that he has not acquired the movables in such a case, Binyan Karka, Dumya Arim, Mitsuras, Behuda. So he's given now another answer. He's saying, you jump to a conclusion. You assumed that the Bryce meant that because they got the slaves, uh, the metatalin, along with doing the Kenyan on the slaves, that slaves are automatically karka. He says, uh-uh, there's a requirement on land. The land has to be fortified cities like in uh, uh, Yehuda. All right. It's very similar to uh, the Gemara's and say here, but uh, like uh, Shushan Purim. When do we all Shushan Purim? We all Shushan Purim in, in cities that had walls around them in the time of, Yo I think it's Yeshua there. But uh, it's here it's saying Yehuda. Uh, it's one or the other. Anyway, the, the, the thing is, let's say you have a city. Uh, North Miami Beach. And a bunch of people who lived in North Miami Beach, all right, moved to uh, Coconut Cay, isn't that where they moved, whatever, all right? That was like a part of North Miami Beach moving to Coconut Cay, is that whatever the name of it is. It didn't make Coconut Cay, uh, Coconut Cay, it made North Miami Beach uh, be in Coconut Cay, because those Hasidim is still Hasidim. There's still Mukushid in North Miami Beach. There's still Mukushid in Rabbi and, the, and Yeshiva, this and that. So a city technically can move. It can move its ground. Needs there. But if it's a city within borders, within a wall, all right, a fortified city, how do you move the city out? 
it's stuck in the wall, all right? So that's the kind of carker, that's the kind of real estate we're talking about here. So movables cannot be acquired along with slaves, even though they're treated as land. So even though, again, we're saying that slaves may be considered like real estate, but you can't get the, uh, if you're making a double deal for slaves and uh, personalities, you don't get the personalities along with acquiring the slaves because the slaves are not considered land in respect to being immobile, like a city within the wall. So the Gemara presents the, presents the source for the law that movables can be acquired together with land, from which the time of the first price learns that the land must be immovable. We just said that. So here's the source. The Tznan, for we learned in the Mishnah, Nechos and Shein Lahem Achrayas, movable property, Niknim im Nechos and Shein Lahem Achrayas, can be bought, acquired together with real estate. The Kesev, Bishtar, or the Chazaka. This is the way you make a, the Kenyans. This is how you acquire either with money or uh, a document or the Chazaka or by uh, making some sort of a stake in the land or what, whatever the Chazaka is at that time. By means of money, a document, or proprietary act. Where were, and it was asked, from where do we derive these laws? the Amakra and Chizkiah said from the verse that states, right, this is in the Divrei Hayamim, all right, and the exact Pasuk, Vayiten lehem abiyem matanat rabat lechesev v'luzahav medonos imarei mitzoros b'yehuda v'im amlocha natan l'yehud l'yoran ki hu habachor. All right, and what does it say there? Their father gave them many gifts of silver and gold and luxurious oh, things. Oh, oh. So those are metaltalin. I think I'm putting someone to sleep. Along with the fortified cities in uh, Yehuda, but he gave the kingship to Yehoram for he was the firstborn. All right? So the cast of Lazar and Dalasim Yehuda. I just read you that passage. The verse implies that the movable objects were acquired automatically through the acquisition of the cities. Ravika explains that the ton of the first price holds that movables can only be acquired together with land if that land is similar to the land mentioned in the source verse, meaning fortified cities. The Gemara presents another uh, version of Ravika's solution. All right, so he challenges this. Get a lot of this. There are those who say Rav Ika, the son of Rav Ami, uh, Edi, excuse me, uh, said as follows The Kuli Ama Avde, the Metatling Dummy. It is possible that all the Tanam actually agree that slaves are, are the equivalent of. Metaltalin, all right? If the equivalent of metaltalin, we're saying that everyone agrees with Rav Nachman. Mm -hmm. According to this understanding, the Bryce of it teaches the one who purchases slaves and movables and performs a proprietary act upon the slave has not acquired the movables. That's the first price, hasn't acquired it because the move the slaves are Consider like movables. So if you say that, I understand it. That's clear. Hard to Tanya kind of. But the second Bryce that teaches he has acquired the movables in such a case. All right. But Odin Allah speaks of a case where the movables were physically located on the slaves. So you have a slave, and the owner of the slave put all this gold and silver and all these things on the slave. All right. Uh, and and now the guy the uh, the the debtor comes along or the or the person who wants to buy the slave says I want to buy your slave, uh, you know as is. All right, so he gets the slave with all the metaltalin. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the slave is a carker because he bought a uh, real estate. It it just means that the only reason he got the personalities and the articles is because they were on the slave. It was, it was in the suitcase that we was wearing it, whatever it was. Thus, they acquired through the mechanism of courtyards. So now, 
who are mentioning a fourth way of acquiring something, and that's chutzah, courtyard. All right. So we're talking about you buy a courtyard, all right, like a little piece of fenced land. And when you buy that, anything that's in the fenced land should come with it. All right. But even if the movables are upon the slave, now asking a question, it, uh, what consequence is it? So he says, wait. They're using, they said you're getting this, the metatalin that are on the slave because it's considered like the case of Chatzir, a courtyard where you buy the courtyard, you get what's in it. So therefore, you buy the slave, you get what's with it. All right, get it with it, the slave. All right. But this slave is different because he's not a Chatzir exactly. All right, like when you go to Disneyland, it says please stay stay clear of the movable, uh, whatever it is, ramp. All right, the slave moves. All right, the the courtyard was talking about the stationary courtyard, but if you're going to consider the slave a courtyard because he has stuff with him, he's a movable courtyard. That's not exactly the same. The a traveling courtyard cannot affect acquisition for its owner. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. The chi seima ba'omed. I don't want to lose my voice. I'm going to go another 10 minutes. <clears throat> and if you will say that the Bryce speaks of a case where the say slave is standing still, so it's a good answer. Let's say, okay, we won't have the slave move. All right. Therefore, he's like a chatzir. He's like a courtyard that's still. I should be able to get. Uh, Rava said, uh, uh, uh. doesn't work. All right? Not in my courtroom, baby, as Judge Judy would say. Because he has the ability to walk. All right? Therefore, he doesn't count as stationary. All right? Omid v'yoshev lo kama. All right? So he can't affect acquisition while with standing or sitting either, right? Because he can always get up and get out of there. Right? The Gemara writes that it's final understanding of eco solution. The Hilchas uh, the Chafas, and the law state in second Brisa that the slave can function as a courtyard. So when is that possible? Is only correct when the slave is bound. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by bound. I mean, are they Duck taking the slave down to the courtyard? Is he, uh, you know, is he actually physically bound? Is, you know, I have this vision of uh, the old chain and ball that's keeping him down. Or, or you know, maybe is uh, he has relatives and everybody that lives there, and he's not going to leave. No matter you, you're not going. It's like a sinning. I'm not getting out of here. All right, he's bound to that place. So I'm not sure exactly what the bound means, uh, but. And so I'm not going to go in it because I don't know the answer tomorrow. But I tell you, but another Bryce taught, I think this is the third Bryce, all right? If one was purchasing land and slaves and they performed the propriety act, meaning he did this Chazak or Kenyan on the land, he does acquire the slaves. No, this is contradicting what we just said. Because, uh, well, we and we gave a different case, but you know, is slaves metatlin or slaves not metatlin? Slaves are karka, how are you gonna get the karka along with this karka? You know, real estate with that real estate. This contradicts the ruling of the first price that rules the slaves are not acquired in such a case. Kamar answers, Hasam but Obdim the Toko. In the third price, the slaves were standing in the field, and therefore they acquired with the field. Okay, that seems to still contradict that other opinion that they have the potential to uh, walk. But according to this price, if they were standing in the field at the time that the Kenya is the acquisition is made, so he gets it. The Gemara analyzes this answer in light of the two explanations of the first two prices advanced above in the name of Rav Ika, the son of Rav Ami. They cloud the high low karma. But this implies that this first price, which teaches 
that he has not acquired the slaves, Kishenam Dim Besokha. So it must mean this is where slaves, hey, where, they, where were you when they needed you for answers, right? We're not uh, standing in the field. Excuse me? Okay. Now, this is understandable. According to that version of the resolution stated by Rav Ika, the son of Rav Ami, all right, that slaves are treated as movable uh, items, which is again as Rav Nachman uh, felt. For this is adequate reason for the law that slaves standing in the field, they are acquired. But if they but if not, they're not acquired, meaning if they're standing somewhere else, they're outside of the field, he doesn't get the slaves along with that field. That slave went on vacation. That slave is in another state visiting uh, relatives he once had. Now he sells the, the plantation that that slave once uh, lived on. Uh, uh, guess what? He doesn't get that slave anymore. All right. This was a different era, obviously. If uh, and obviously Jewish law had a lot of different uh, laws of how you treat slaves, they are acquired elo, but if not, he's not there in the night. Right? But according to the version of Ika's resolution, which he said that both them hold <coughs> that slaves are regarded as land, where it's two lines from the bottom of your base. Uh, so why do I need the slaves to be standing in the slave to be acquired? Hamash Shmuel, he can bring a quote from Shmuel. Machalo Esos Somebody, this uh, land baron, he sold, Reuven sold Shimon 10 lots of land in 10 different countries. All right? He sold them his lot in Paris, in France. He sold his lot in England. He sold his lot in the United States. He sold his lot in uh, 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 Israel. He wouldn't sell in Israel. He sold his lot in Argentina. He sold his lot in uh, uh, whatever. What? Philippines, thank you. All right, all, all the different places. You think the buyer has to go to all those different places to do? No, he only has to do a Kenyan. In one of those places, they're all part of the same deal. Once the buyer has performed the propriety act upon one of the fields, Kanakulam, he's acquired all of them. So we see from this ruling that the even widely separated lands can be acquired together. All right, so it maybe will raise a question in your mind. Uh, what about the, the slave that uh, was not in the piece of land? We said he what he should. Maybe he should have been with them. But even according to your reasoning, this distinction is difficult to explain. explain. According to that version of Rav Iker's resolution, it states that all Tanam hold slaves of you this metatalin. Why does he have to stand in the field, according to them? Right top of Yud Beis, Ahmed Beis. Uh, why we have established, why we have established, we don't require movables to be piled upon the land in order to be acquired with the field. Rather, what is there for you to say in explanation of the requirement that the slaves be standing in the field? Shani metatale de niyade, mi metatale de lo niyade. Movable items can propel themselves are different from movable items that cannot propel themselves. Again, making a slight distinction with slaves. And therefore, slaves must be standing in the field to be acquired along with it, although other movables uh, need not be, like an animal, all right? Or, or without them, plain uh, personalities. Hachanami shani mikake denaide here too, according to the version the whole, according to the version that holds that slaves are regarded as land, right? Which would be uh, uh, Ula, all right? Uh, who said it? Mean we can say that the land, land that can propel itself, is different from land that cannot propel itself. 
Accordingly, it can be understood that Shmuel's ruling allowed separated fields to be acquired together does not apply to slaves. Of the Mekakere de Maidehu, uh, for since slaves are lands that can propel themselves, they are no way connected to the fields being acquired unless they are physically standing in it. While there in Shmuel's case, the mass of birth is a single entity and therefore single propriety can act, can suffice to acquire even widely fields. So he's saying in that case, the reason you got the other nine fields along with the first field is because all the different fields, even though they were in different countries, they're all attached to the same earth. So they have a root in common, all right? They, they can't leave planet Earth, all right? Whereas, I guess, the slave could go in the spaceship to leave planet Earth, all right? Thus, the requirements the slaves must be standing in the field in order to be acquired along with the field can be understood according to why the version of Ikra's resolution. Uh, okay, the next section talks about Me'ila. I've almost lost my voice, and I have to end here. I'm sorry, a little bit early. So we're ending um, about seven lines from the top of Yid Beis. I got to go to Dom and Shachris and uh, go somewhere. So thank you, Rennie. Thank All you. Right. Rennie, this is not a simple subject. Thank you. Yeah. Yes.